Hello again everyone, this is the Biologist 13 and welcome back to the Custom Spawners tutorial. This is part 4 and in this tutorial we're going to be covering the basic spawner properties. And in the last tutorial we covered all the basic entity properties over here, but you can also set to, like specific properties to the spawner block itself. So let's jump right in. So I printed out the info on a spawner beforehand and as you can see there's a lot of properties that you can set to it. So we're going to cover location through minimum distance today. So uh, let's get started then. So to set location is basically just to set where the spawner block itself is. So to do that you just look at the block you want to be a spawner or to move the spawner to. Get out of the way sheep. And then you just do slash CSS set location. If you have one selected otherwise you'd have to specify the ID you like. So, so then once you do that you can just move it around wherever you want. So I'm going to move it back to here for the purpose of this tutorial. Uh, so yeah, that's basically set location. It's not too complicated. The next thing you have is spawn rate. And this has two parts to it. It has both the mobs per spawn, which is this two, and the tick rate, which is like the number 120 here. So the mobs per spawn is how many mobs it'll try to spawn each spawn cycle. So that means it'll spawn two mobs every 120 ticks. And 120 ticks is the equivalent of 6 seconds because when your server's not lagging horribly uh, you get 20 ticks per second. So 120 divided by 20 is 6, therefore 6 seconds. So yay math. So anyway, uh, I'll show you how to set that. So if you want to change the amount of mobs that you'll get each time, you just do slash CSS MPS for mobs per spawn and then you type would type in the ID and then you'd type in how many you want so let's say you want to do four each time so now if I turn this on and then we made it nighttime because its light level is too low as you can see we got uh, there should be one of these probably stacked or whatever but yeah so as you can see it's spawning four mobs. Yeah, it spawns four. So it spawns four mobs every time now until it reaches the mob cap. So let's just turn this off and remove the mobs. Alright, so that's basically what the uh, mobs per spawn does. It just changes how many mobs you get per time. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can set how fast it is. So six seconds is pretty slow for a spawner. Well, let's say you wanted it to spawn every second. Then what you can do is slash CSS, and then rate, and then you type in the ID, and then you type in how many ticks you want in between each spawn. So 20 ticks will be one second. So if I turn this on, and slash CSS on, you'll see it's spawning a lot faster now. So it's already reached 12 mobs. And you can make that as low as one tick, or as high as like multiple trillions of ticks, or whatever. So <laughs> one tick is pretty insane. It's pretty fun though. So anyway, we'll turn that off and remove the mobs. So yeah, that's that. Um, and then the next property we're going to look at is the radius. So radius is how far away the spawner will try to spawn mobs from. So at eight blocks right now, that means it'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the farthest away from it it can spawn. And that's in any direction, um, up or down too. So if I change this to, uh, if I change this using slash CSS rad or slash CSS radius, and then change it to two, for example, that means it can only spawn two blocks away, and this is as far as it can go. So if I turn that on, then you'll see they're all probably going to group. They're all going to group like right here. So uh, yeah, <laughs> so you can make some pretty cool stuff with that. So I'll remove the mobs again. And there we are. So that's radius. And the next property you'll look at is the maximum mobs. And maximum mobs is the maximum number of mobs that the spawner allows to have spawned. So we had it at 12, so that means it would stop spawning mobs once there was 12 mobs that it had created. But let's say we want a 256, for example. We can set that with slash CSS, mobs, and then you type in the ID number, and then however many. So if I turn this on, it's going to keep spawning for quite some time. As you can see, it's still spawning. And we're going to get a lot of snow golems in here. Um, oh man, 
Okay, so that's uh, what the mobs property does. So I'll turn that off. And we'll remove the mobs. And I'm going to set it back down to, let's say, 16. All right. Next property we're going to look at is a very important one. That's the maximum light property. So maximum light and also uh, minimum light, those are that's the range of light levels that it can spawn mobs at. So this whole area around here is a light level that's low enough. It's like four, five, six, stuff like that. So since we had it set to seven before, it was all able to spawn. However, if we moved close to one of these torches where it was like 12 or 13, for example, we would not be able to spawn them over here at this current setting because it's too high of a light level. However, you can change it. So with uh, slash CSS max light and then 15, for example, and if it's 0 to 15, it can spawn in any light condition whatsoever. And uh, yeah, so 15 is sunlight, and that's the highest light level in Minecraft. And 0 is the lowest, which is like dark caveness of cave. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you can also specify the minimum light level, though. So say you only wanted it spawning during the day. So that's like uh, light levels 7 through 15, usually. So you can make it so it's slash CSS min light and then 7, and that would make it so it can't spawn at a lower light level than 7. So if I turn that on then, and CSS on, we're not going to get anything spawning because there's no area that's between uh, 7 and 15 within its spawn radius of just two blocks. However, if we changed it to day though, then we'll get spawning because it's now a suitable light level. So I'm going to turn that off before we're overrun. <laughs> and remove the mobs. All right, so that's minimum and maximum light level. Uh, another thing that you can do that's kind of like that is the maximum and minimum distance. And this is the maximum play distance a player can be from the spawner to have it like create mobs, and then the minimum distance that it can be. So as long as the player is within that range, it can spawn. So if I set... Uh, I can set the maximum distance with slash CSS max dis, and then you type in the ID number and then the maximum distance. So let's say 64. So that means I can be up to 64 blocks away in any direction from the spawner, and it'll still spawn. So if I turn this on, um, it's going to keep spawning for quite some time. See it's still spawning, even when we're really far away. So, uh, However, if I changed it down to something like maybe 5, for example, uh, as you can see, it's not spawning anymore. I'll remove the mobs so you can see that better. So as you can see, it's not spawning anymore, even though it was when you we were this distance before. And even when we start moving in closer, it's still not spawning, still not spawning, still not spawning. Now it's spawning, only when we're five blocks away. So uh, I'll remove the mobs from that guy. And we'll turn it off. Actually, we'll keep it on for a sec. So then the other distance property thing that you can do with it is the minimum distance. So let's say or that's with slash CSS min dis, and then let's say 5. And then let's make the max distance uh, 10. So what will happen then is if I move within 10 blocks, or between 5 and 10 blocks, it'll spawn, but it'll stop if I get too close. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so those are just the distance properties and basic spawner properties that are in custom spawners. So we will be covering uh, the other properties that you see here in future tutorials, but till next time, I'll see ya!